Uh, but we have got some some pretty chilling, or probably some pretty flaming gameplay, uh, depending on which side of the ball and which side you're rooting for. Uh, Carflow and J Crew stepping up to the plate for this winter semis match. Yep. So starting in on uh, Steve versus Roy, I do have to correct myself because I have said it on stream too many times. Oh, yeah. uh, Steve does not get more iron on PS2. Uh, this is my public apology. You can uh, find it on Twitter. I'm fist pumping so hard. I, we've lear we're learning today, boys. I, do wanna, <laughs> I hate it because the sides are, they look like they're they, made of iron. They do. They do look like metal, but the entire composition of this stage is stone, and the entire composition of this match right Woo! now is car flow because he is doing what uh, doing what sorties and doing a rushdown characters can do best against Steve, especially when you have a disjoint like Roy's, is just go in, poke at this really safe distance, and then one hit means you can go to town. And Carflow doing an excellent job of trying to stuff out uh, some of uh, some of Steve's stuffy buttons, and J Crew has no answers right now without any gold in his pocket. Yeah, no uh, reinforced or faster minecart, meaning J Crew had a lot harder of a time getting back into center stage. And yeah, even just the two dirt blocks right there, Carflow's just swinging through them. There is no stopping Carflow getting in right now. Yeah, if there's anything I want to see er uh, a little bit from J Crew is like, while minecart is obviously a get out disadvantage free button, so will in a lot of ways are blocks. And you need to be able to utilize blocks away from the stage really effectively. That time, once again, trying to jump back onto stage and set a block, ergo getting caught by Carflow's very, very massive up smash. Yeah, and it feels like just for all of the options that Steve has, especially at ledge, Carflow's been ready for every single one. Every single ledge interaction has come out in Carflow's favor. And once again, J Crew back at the ledge, finally fighting his way out with a dash attack. But right back in, Carflow may be looking to close this out with a three stock real quick. Nice grab. Yeah, catching the DI in as well. The position that Carflow has been taking on ledge has been so good. A nice little feint there in order to get the shield up, but the wood forward smash isn't going to close out the stock. And once again, really just down to exactly one iron and burning it immediately with that minecart, which should result in a stock. No mash means a forward smash. Even with wood, that stock is gone. Still got plenty of track to come back from, though. Absolutely. Carflow, not, not wasting too much energy on a mash, just wanting to take things slowly. You've got J. Crew at these red percents. You've still got two completely fresh yeah. stocks, but here comes. Yeah, here come the Steve combos. Can't get too too comfortable just yet. It ain't over till the screen says game. He missed his block placement. That could have gone for more, but either way, still 87 and still plenty to work from. It's given to just that little bit of damage, despite the great position that Carflow is in. It's enough pause, you know? Not, not quite. Yeah, not quite. It was enough pause in order to get a fair number of materials. We do have diamond. There is a little bit of gold. One iron block threatens a whole lot right now, but this up throw, good DI is going to prevent the stock from being a loss. But J Crew's got to find their way back up. They do another jump get up. Mm -hmm. Another yeah. one. Come on, man. You learned. You learned two stocks ago. <laughs> That's tough. So, yeah, I mean, we saw it definitely as soon as J Crew finally got to start playing the Steve game plan after taking that first stock, you know, finally getting that little bit of like seed resources in into the bank. It, it did start to look further in J Crew's favor, but it was just a little bit too little too late. I like both of these stocks here. Uh, you can rewind to either one, uh, Mr. Production Man, uh, because we have right here in this kind of position, Carflow, uh, throughout most of the set, throughout most of that game, had been positioning either here or here to threaten things like run off forward air to, uh, to catch roll getups, just that really nice reactable space. However, both of his stocks, he ended up taking the stock here, which is just a good way of pro uh, proving that Roy's threat range can be constantly uh, mixed up and constantly be very quick to react to. So Carful is just constantly taking advantage of that speed by showing J Crew different looks in order to get stocks, and his consistent game plan is away from the look that gets him stocks. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Anyway, yeah, we have uh, <laughs> starting this game too. We have uh, J Crew's counterpick, the Min Min, coming in, trying to trying to keep Carflow a little bit more away. I think. Yeah, this feels like it's just more swingy of a matchup mm -hmm. overall for us. Like we're seeing, we get to see J Crew control space uh, thanks to the bands of FD and Kalos. That's going to be a little bit harder to do. And the edge, but the edge guarding is still there. The potential two framing is still there. 
but you're also dead to a thought as well. You don't have that same type of recovery and disadvantage that Steve has access to. Ooh, almost dying there in center stage, but great DI from J. Crew, keeping him alive now. But playing at the ledge again, using those arms to threaten those ranges, like you were talking about before, where Carflow was staying in that platform horizontal range. Now J. Crew has a little more ways to threaten there. They're using the megawatt to get stock one. Yeah, you're covering all of that space. Great, excellent point for us, Armin. And that may be the context of this switch. While the chase down was excellent from Carflow there, uh, running off ledge with that forward air, uh, just by doing drop from ledge, double jump, Carflow can't stay in that same position with things like Ram Ram, Megawatt, Dragon. And once you get uh, once you get Carflow playing close to try and hit that drop from ledge, double jump, that's when you can sneak by with roll ons. You do have to get by this juggle though, as Carflow trying to play this adva advantage as much as possible. Maybe an ill-timed roll sets us back into a corner situation, though. Ooh, Jekru a little bit scared in shield there. Didn't really have too many options while Carflow on top of them. Right, just an up smash in order to find that reversal, though. Jekru using a lot of Nair, trying to stay as, as grounded as possible. But the speed of Roy is just threatening so many ranges as much as possible. And there's Ooh. that drop from ledge double jump. So good uh, until it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what, once Carflow is able to call that out, potentially looking at a third stock now with J. Crew at ledge once again. Second hit of Narek did keep the double jump, so J. Crew has another lease on life rolling in, but gets sent right back out. Oh, wait, that was such a clean... That was so low to the ground, but so, just out of perfect spacing to get the grounded version of it super quick. And the spot dodge there, taking advantage of Min Min's extremely slow grab. Ooh, and the side B movement, too, using the wave bounce. Love to see it. Love to see Roy... Uh, like to see ways that Carflow can extend off stage. Because as a fast faller, Roy can't spend a ton of time out there, which is where Min Min can really struggle. Uh, and spending a little bit too much time in the air over center stage, that platform... Not being his friend, but finally getting the air dodge, finally whittling down enough resources early enough to find that deep edge guard. Yep, and that is going to be Carflow taking things 2-0 over J-Crew. Yeah, very nice. J-Crew has been doing uh, a lot of, has been on a lot of really solid runs late, lately, uh, getting top 24 winner side, I think two weeks in a row now, mm -hmm. using that mix of Steve and Min Min, which... Hey, it makes a lot of sense. You can power through a lot of early rounds, but what can you do once people know the matchup? And Carflow really showed that his aggressive style of play can both smother Steve and bully Min Min. Can be, can be tough to work around that. Exactly. Mm. I still think the Steve was the better pick, though. Like, Min Min, in theory, like, yeah, you can just get some cheeky two frames with down-angled Ram Ram. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I take this stock, like, accidentally, almost. But Steve offers a little bit more uh, variety in that game plan in order to keep Roy out. You can have different block structures. You can not even... You can just, like, place one block sometimes against Roy so if they're really in your face. And that's kind of enough in order to get Roy to jump, get Roy to commit a little bit get a little bit of resources in your game plan, or at the very least, you get a chance to land any Nair or any jab, which, as a fast faller, can convert into so much. Yeah, and I mean, as we saw in game one, Jaker really did start picking up steam near the end, bringing yeah. things pretty close. So I really just feel like if he had kept that mindset going into game two with the Steve, we definitely could have seen a, a different, a different uh, set. Yeah.